Outdoor Travel Channel with Robin Sherry. So hi guys, we're uh, doing a second show because we seem to have had a uh, technical difficulties with the first one. So our conversation today is why and how are RVers getting or uh, RV living how are they getting a bad rap? Like, what's causing some of the stereotypes? What's causing some of the bad um, news or information we're hearing about RVing? So we thought we'd just talk about some of it, and I'm sure some of the people who are watching us will probably can, uh, can relate to this thing. And wow, everything's working great this time. I can actually see my chat. <laughs> so for those of you that do hop on board, uh, I want to introduce to you uh, Aaron Jimerson from Three Tails RV, and I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, and uh, <laughs> we want to start doing some regular talks like this, and the only way that we can get proficient at it is coming on here and just winging ourselves, and if somebody makes fun of us, the only thing I can say is, hey, you need we're to doing do it. <laughs> we're doing it, you're not, <laughs> so we're going to make mistakes. So. Those of you who uh, catch this video, welcome. We're really happy to have you. We're going to talk about some sensitive stuff, um, but at the same time, we mean well. <clears throat> so, the, the the topic of this show was what's giving, uh, what causes RVers or RV living or RV lifestyles a bad rap. And so, one of the main things that we talked about earlier in another show was the homeless. And uh, in Seattle. Since I'm from Seattle too, I can really relate to some of the things that you wanted to say about the homeless up there. So, uh, uh, tell me what you know or what you've seen uh, with homeless people using RVs that are causing debate and issues up there. Well, some of the problems that we're facing is the uh, average income. And I had a slide up earlier, and I'm gonna see if I can find that. Um, I use Amazon an example, and I'm not saying Amazon is a bad thing, but Amazon is part of the community here. And they pay uh, these people, these college graduates that come out of school, they're paying them seventy to $80,000 a year to start. So with them being a major part of the community, that tends to drive up the rent costs, the cost of living. And it, it, it just gets out of control. So the, the average income in the Seattle area, and this is based off of some information I just pulled up on the internet. It says here that the average household earning is less than eighty thousand dollars. Wait a minute. If your average household earnings is less than eighty thousand dollars a year, you're now in a minority in Seattle. That stunning news comes to the light at in the data released. Thursday by the Census Bureau that shows that in 2015, Seattle median household income broke over $80,000 a year. And that's as of September 15th of 2016. So it's only going to dramatically rise since then. Yeah, so anyways, you were talking about, let's get back to the subject so we entertained our viewers the best we can. So uh, we're talking about the, the income homeless. of median income, the average income in the Seattle area. The median income is at $80,000 a year, and that was based off of a census taken by the Census Bureau in September 19th of 2016. So some of the RVs I remember seeing up in Everett were like in truck, not truck stops, but truck areas that people, would, uh, truckers would park. And you'd see these RVs that you know were missing windows. I don't even know if some of them had engines. And I heard reports where some they get their RV, these old RVs and then they live in them and they literally could not move them. Um, and the city was having issues with that. They had to actually be towed. Well, what the city did here was they uh, built an encampment for them. And what I mean by an encampment, it's almost like a RV places that you go um, on, wow, I'm froze. Um, it's like an RV resort, except for it's filled with non-operable RVs, people that are, have tarps completely over them. Um, when that overflows, then they 
push them out onto the streets and they stay there. It, it's it's some it, it's it's really crazy out there here for for stuff like that, <laughs> and it's becoming more of an epidemic up and down the west coast because of the warmer temperatures in our regions. Yeah. So I know. Uh, so yeah, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, these people live in in the cities and trying to use these RVs and they're run down stuff like that. It's like I know that some people get their impressions of that's what RVing is all about, and it's like it's once again just a smaller, uh, uh, you know, small population of people. But one of the other things I know you and I were talking about was just plain old lower cost. So now we got people that are going to big cities like Phoenix, like our place, and your Seattle. And uh, even if they're making an average of what eighty thousand a year up there, they're using RVs, finding that it's more affordable to try to live in an RV. And if they're lucky enough to get an RV park, they can re reduce their overhead significantly. Well, and then they go from point to point. So I use use this as an example. There is a RV park in Fife, which is at the it's in between Seattle and Tacoma or not an RV park, there's a rest area that we use to dump our black tanks with. We're stuck, We're in a location where we don't move, so we have to go over and dump our tanks over there. Uh -huh. And they'll go from that one, and then there's another one at the northern end by Everett, and they go back and forth between these two rest areas. They'll spend one night down here, they'll drive down to the other one and spend the night there. If they get kicked out of one of the other two, there's parking rides that they use Jeez. that they'll stop in and stay the night there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but typically people leave a big mess behind them. So if they stay for more than a couple of days, they are leaving their trash, their uh, recyclables, and other things that they don't want. They're not throwing them away. They're just leaving them right there on the site. So that creates more problems for the rest of us that are trying to do it the right way. Yeah. And that's the same kind of problem we're having down here. But ours is desert land. And uh, we have the BLM land down here, so there's, you know, these people have got this impression they can go to all these BLM lands. Well, there's still places you have to pay, and the fact is you need to take care of the property. And, so and with the, what he means by BLM, that's, that's uh, government land that they let people onto, yeah. and they do boondocking, which in other words means dry camping where they don't have electrical, they don't have any sewer connections. They just go out there and they stay. Yeah, and so they'll build fires anywhere, leave garbage a lot of times, and they've even been known to dump their tanks in the desert. Yeah. So it's like, not not good. <laughs> well, that only that creates more environmental problems, more environmental hazards. <laughs> not only imagine what the, the biological aspect is, would that be, uh, that also attracts different wildlife to that area. So if animals are looking for food, then I hate to say it, that's where they're going to go find it. Where people's waste is. So one of the other subjects we we're talking about, kind of shortening our video from the last one, is uh, abuse of like Walmart parking lots and abuse of uh, Cabela's and then parking rides and and rest areas. Um, I know that uh, you've heard yep. you've read a couple of articles about that too, didn't you? The, yeah, there's it's again it's it's the bad apples that ruin it for the rest of us. They're going to be becoming more and more restrictive on selecting, letting people stay at these at these other facilities. Um, and my suggestion is, if it's posted or whether it's not posted, people need to go in and actually talk to the manager and ask them if it's okay. Don't just assume that it's okay. Go in and ask because we don't want to create more problems for more people. Yeah. And uh, one thing I have noticed, at least you know. Uh, there's so many casinos nowadays. Almost every casino is a place that if you had to overnight someplace, you could probably find a casino. <laughs> probably just as easy as a Walmart. <laughs> and the, well, you got rest stops too. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to stay in a rest area. But. Well, some of the, the bigger truck stops, I know they're getting fewer and fewer as, as the economy is doing what it's doing, but they're still available. And of course, one of the last things that kind of give our viewers a bad rap is we're talking about the dark side of uh, of the YouTube, where there's a lot of great channels out there, super, super great channels, that, like yours, <laughs> hopefully mine, 
But then there was kind of that medium side of these kind of gypsy kind of folks. And then there's a real dark side of these people, I swear, are just insane. And uh, in fact, that's where a lot of... Uh, so my biggest worry is about new RVers, you know. They start getting on the internet and they start searching up, uh, you know, uh, RV living and RV uh, lifestyle. And they run into some of these uh, crazy channels, you know, these... Um, and you can't just say that they're a van dweller. I mean, they're in trailers, they're in all kinds of unique things. There's just, a, I don't know, they just seem to be on their own wavelength. Anyway, so they're really not exercising practicality in RVing. <laughs> and so uh, giving us a bad name. And a lot of times they're abusing the system or pushing it to the edge. And they're literally you're documenting it on, on their channels, you know. But... Uh, Mm -hmm. Once again, it's a minority, so I always worry about uh, the bad rap of, uh, of the YouTube of getting on the channels that make you think that you can just go out there and do anything you want. We're really, just like whether you're civilized or not, we have rules and regulations you can abide whether you're an RVer or you own a house. Anyway, so that always seems like a, a big issue. So. Well, I gotta tell you a funny story. Um, Lori and I went to do our, our annual dump for our RV and it was late at night one night. We pulled up in there and we're dumping our RV and there was this couple that was in there and they were watching their car at Watch the uh, dump car? station. Oh really? Yeah, you only get 45 seconds of water, but they were out there washing their car and it was like, it was part of their normal routine. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> I want to share that. <laughs> I've actually never, I haven't come across that. Of course, I, I was in a, uh, camping place that I had to give Cinder a bath once. <laughs> but did you go out there and use the potable or the non-potable water to wash the wash the dog with? I no, mean, they I, had potable water there. Weird. Cinder, we felt like reporting him, but there was nobody to report him to. Yeah, yeah. Well, Cinder, she ended up uh, rolling in some we were by the beach and rolled into some dead clams or something. It was like we went uh, to a campground, <laughs> so we went to dump her tanks. We took her stinky dog over there and they had some clean water, uh, uh, drinking water, and so we just hooked the hose to it and gave her a bath right there. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling what people will do to uh, save a few bucks. And I guess that uh, there's becoming more and more of a stigma with RV living because of the bad apples that are out there. And I, I understand that there are people out there that are retirement age that go out and buy rigs and they go around the country and that's what they do yeah but it's like i said it's always the bad apples that seem to ruin it for the rest of us I know, and right? i get it so people are trying to live within their means but there's a way to do it the right way and that doesn't affect the rest of the community agreed so yeah so i'm gonna wrap this up because uh, cool. uh we were kind of experimenting a little bit but at the same time we want to have a discussion and we're actually trying to learn a little bit with our software here, but we'd like to do regular discussions in the future on different subjects. Today we just picked the bad rap uh, thing, but there's a lot of great subjects that we'd like to talk about. So we tried to we're going to try to do this a little more regular. So uh, where can people find you? Uh, three tails RV .com. That is the number three tails RV .com. Yep, and he does great videos. A lot of uh, do-it-yourself videos and uh, and. Uh, fixing things and, and my shows are more lifestyle so um, we're at RV Talk Radio you can go to rvtalkradio.com which is a podcast and uh, it's been very popular we focus on RV lifestyles how people live in these things so we don't tend to be talking about the things you do but we do cross paths a lot so if you have any any suggestions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section below in this video so that we can address some of these issues that you'd like for us to talk about. Definitely. So you've been in RVing for quite a while, so have I, and uh, I think I've been doing it since 2006, uh, full-timing off and on, and you've been uh, doing it for a couple of years now. Oh, uh, we're going on our third year, yes. Yeah. So we're going to wrap her up. We're going to change our screen to our end screen and say thank you very much, folks, for listening. Please leave comments. Give us some ideas for our shows in the future. And we'll probably be much better with our software in the future. <laughs> as we go. It's a work in progress, folks. Yes. Yeah, so Just you. remember, live simple, live free, and enjoy the ride. And we will see you on our next video. Bye now. 
Hey, thank you very much for listening to our video and our live chat between Retailed RV and RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We appreciate it. Bye now.